Welcome to the Sabbath School for November 24, 2012. And we're continuing on with the theme of the sealing message. Last week we looked into the reception of the sealing angel, and this week we're wanting to learn more about this seal and how does it relate to our experience. The Lord's given us a very high um, calling in, in our for all Christians in our experience that um, he desires us to enter into. In question 4, it reads there in the text from Matthew 5 and verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So the Lord requires this perfection of character in each one of our lives. And the seal of the living God will be placed upon those only who bear a likeness to Christ in character. Christ is perfect, and we're called to achieve this perfection in our lives also. But how does this, this happen? How, how do we get to this point? Because of ourselves, we know that there is nothing good in us. We, we can't keep the law. We can't, uh, we can't follow God's requirements. In um, the note there, continues on, as the wax takes the impression of the seal, so the soul takes the impression of the Spirit of God and, re and retain the image of Christ. So it's through this, this Spirit of God that upon our lives is imparted this, this mould which brings us into conformity with the perfection of God and his character. And it talks more about this, how this is received in under question 1. In Ephesians 1 verse 13 it says, In whom ye also trusted, that after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And then again in Ephesians 4 and verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit works in our lives to seal us, to mould us and shape us after the divine image. In the note there under question 1, it also reads, We may talk of the blessings of the Holy Spirit, but unless we prepare ourselves for its reception, what avail are our works? Are we striving with all our power to attain the stature of men and women in Christ? Are we seeking for His fullness, ever pressing towards the mark set before us in the perfection of His character? When the Lord's people reach this mark, they will be sealed in their foreheads, filled with the Spirit, they will be complete in Christ, and the recording angel will declare it finished. So the Holy Spirit works in our lives to bring us into conformity to this character of Christ, and then, as a result, we receive the seal. But how many are sealed? Under question 6 there, in Revelation 7 and verse 4, we read, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Hold on, the children of Israel? But Israel, weren't Israel no longer part God's church when they rejected Christ? Well, what does it say there in Romans 2 and verse 28 and 29 under question 6? It says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is the outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So this, these children of Israel that's, that we're talking about here are not the old 12 tribes that we read of in, um, in the Old Testament, but rather this is spiritual Israel. This is those who have... Um, have received this circumcision in the flesh, this dying to self, this receiving of the new heart and cut away of the old life, that Christ can impart his character upon us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then in Romans 9 and verse 6 and 8, 6 to 8, it covers it in more detail again. Not as though the word of God hath taken of none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, because they are the seed of Abraham, as they are all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for seed. So it's no longer by birthright that we would become children of Israel, but by the promise of God, and that promise fulfilled in Christ Jesus. 
So what is this? What is this seal? What is this? This um, seal that we've been studying for the last few weeks. Yeah. And we've already learnt there, uh, back initially in question four, that God requires per perfection in our lives. In James 2 and verses 10 and 11, the text there under question 3, it reads, For whosoever shall keep the whole of the law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit, do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou committed no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou become a transgressor of the law. So we can see that if we, if we offend in one point of these, this law that's described here in, in James, which we can clearly see, do not commit adultery and do not kill, these are both part of the Decalogue. What, are the, what is the actual Decalogue? What are those Ten Commandments? In the note there we read, in the second note under question three, it says, The sign of obedience is the observance of the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. If men keep the fourth commandment, they will keep the rest. So it's interesting here that, uh, that we read that, that this, this fourth commandment, the Sabbath, is, is this sign. But, but how do we know that this, this, is this a sign? In the text there under question seven, we cover it in Ezekiel 20 verses uh, 12 and 20. It says, Moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifieth them. And again, and hallowed my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. So this Sabbath that's been given to us, part of the Ten Commandments, is a sign of the sanctification that God is working in our lives, bringing us into conformity to all of his laws. And the actual Sabbath commandment there, we can read it under question 2 in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So this Sabbath commandment which the Lord gave us, we can read more about it in Exodus 30, 31 and verse 13 under question 2 there again. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it shall be a sign between, between me and you throughout your generations, that ye might know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So this Sabbath that the Lord gave us is a sign that he is sanctifying our lives, purifying us and bringing us into conformity, perfect conformity with his law, that we may be perfect as our Father which in heaven is perfect. So in the note there under question three, the last note, it says, while the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the laws of the state contrary to the fourth commandment, will be avowed as allegiance to the power that is opposing God, the keeping of the true Sabbath in obedience to God's law is evidence of a loyal loyalty to the Creator. While one class, by accepting the sign of submission to the earthly powers, receive the mark of the beast, the other, by choosing a token of alliance to the divine authority, receive the seal of God. So who shall we serve? God or the earthly power, men. So if we are to become a part of this sealed 140,000 that we read of, this Sabbath is becoming clear that it is an important aspect of becoming part of this number. In uh, question, question 7 we read there, um, in the note it says, I saw that the Holy Sabbath is and will be a separating war between the true Israel of God and unbelievers, and that the Sabbath is the great question to unite the hearts of God's dear waiting saints. And then again, I pray that my brethren may realize that the third angel's message means much to us and that the observance of the true Sabbath is a sign that distinguishes those who serve God from those who serve him not. So this Sabbath is a sign that, that we are serving God and we truly need to enter into this, this Sabbath of rest that. Um, 
that God can sanctify our lives and bring us in conformity to his ways. In um, question 8 there, it reads again under that text there in Ezekiel 20 and verse 12, Moreover, I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifieth them. The note there under question 8 reads, To those who keep holy the Sabbath day, it is a sign of sanctification. True sanctification is harmony with God, oneness with him in character. It is received through obedience to those principles that are the transcript of his character. As the Sabbath is a sign of obedience, he who from the heart obeys the fourth commandment will obey the whole of the law. He is sanctified through obedience. And that's not, a, not obedience outwardly. It says there that we have to obey from the heart. The Holy Spirit has to work in us that we can have God's laws written upon our hearts that the outworking fruits may be observance to these obedience to these precepts that the Lord has given us. For of ourselves, we can't actually keep them, but through his Holy Spirit working in us, us to sanctify our lives, we can be brought into conformity to his ways. So in conclusion today, let's like to read the, uh, the final note there under question 8. It says, What is the seal of the living God, which is placed upon the foreheads of his people? It is a mark which angels, but not human eyes, can read. For the destroying angel must see this mark of redemption. And if the angel, destroying angel sees this mark of the redemption, he will pass over these people and not destroy them. So I pray that we can all study these truths deeply and um, receive the Holy Spirit into our lives that God's law may be written upon our hearts and the fruits of righteousness may come forth, that we might be sealed and be part of that Israel of God, that 144,000. Amen.